Shime waza, choking techniques. Juji jime, cross lock choke. In this choking technique, my palms are facing upwards. With the left hand, grab the left lapel. With the right hand, grab the right lapel. And you want to apply pressure to the neck and lean forward. And this is a variation of Gyaku Juji Jime. From the bottom, you're taking the same grip, pulling your opponent forward, and applying the choke. Use your legs to control him as well. Nami Ju Jijime, standard cross lock choke. In this choke, you will notice that the palms are facing downward. And then you're applying pressure to the neck in a downward motion, making sure that your head and body is pressed forward. Kata Ju Jijime, half cross choke. In this choke, one palm is facing downwards and the other palm is facing upwards. You apply pressure by driving your elbow downwards once the choke is in place, moving your head forward as well. Here's a modification of Kata Jujijime. You want to go underneath your opponent's arm, grab the opposite lapel, use your feet to push him out, and then roll him over and apply the choke. Make sure you secure his arm tightly, grab above his neck to do the choke, kick his knees out and roll on top. Reverse Nami Juji Jime, standard cross lock. This is the Nami Juji Jime from behind your opponent. You're going to go across and grab your opponent's lapel and reach it over on the other side of his shoulder and applying pressure. You want to open up your opponent so that you can get a good clean path to the lapel. Adaka Jime, naked arm choke. In this choke, you want to apply the pressure to the neck with your bare arm. Make sure you cup your hands, pull to you, and press forward. This is a variation of Hadaka Jime. Instead of cupping your hands, you're going to grab your elbow, press forward on his head with your hand, as well as pushing forward with your head and body. Here's another variation of Hadaka Jime. You want to lift the opponent's leg up to apply pressure on his back, and work your hands underneath his chin and pull up and choke. Make sure you're cupping your hands and applying the pressure. Here's another variation of Hadaka Jime. Go underneath your opponent's head Grab your own judo uniform and choke him in a scissors-like motion. Press forward and apply the pressure. Kurieri Jime, sliding collar choke. With one hand, go across and grab the opposite lapel of your opponent, and the other one, go underneath his armpit and while pulling down with one hand and 
pulling up with the other, choke your opponent. Here's a variation of Okuriyeri Jime. Open your opponent up and get the standard Okuriyeri Jime choke. Use your legs to push your opponent down or you can hold it across his body. Stay tight to his head and apply the choke. Here is another variation of Okuriyeri Jime. In this move, you're bringing your opponent to the side and also locking his arm with your legs and applying the choke. You want to stay tight to him so he can't run away. Here's another variation of Okuriyeri Jime and you're going to be choking forward. The deeper you bring your hips, the more effective this choke is. Grab the standard Okuriyeri Jime choke and slide your hips forward as deep as possible. Kataha Jime, single wing choke. Control your opponent's arm by pulling it outwards and then taking it behind his head. You apply pressure by forcing the head forward and pulling the arm back. Make sure you stay tight to your opponent's body. Here we'll go over multiple variations of kata hajime. This is when you're lying on your back, still taking the opponent's arm outwards and then back inwards around his neck. Try to stay as tight as possible with your opponent. You can also take him to the side to apply the choke as well. Also, you can use your leg to lock his arm and apply the choke. Sankaku Jime series, triangular choke. Sankaku is translated as triangle. Here is the choke without the opponent. Notice that I'm pinching my knees together. Do not squeeze. This is a front view of catching the opponent on Sankaku. Make sure you turn to the side in order to get your legs over and then pinch your knees. Here's a variation of Sankaku Jime. This is called Yoko Sankaku or Sankaku from the side. You can choke your opponent. You can armbar your opponent. Ensure that you tie that arm up. That is critical in ensuring this choke and pin work. Here's another variation by rolling over. Make sure you get your heels in tight. Pull your opponent up, get your heels in, and then roll. You can do the choke, the arm bar. Again, it is very important to get the heel underneath the elbow, tie the arm, apply the choke, and the arm bar. Always remember to pinch your knees, don't squeeze, pinch your knees. If you don't get the choke or the arm bar, you can easily slide into the pin. Make sure you're on the opposite side of the arm you're tying up. Drop your hips and keep your head up. Again, do not forget to pin from the opposite side in which you are tying the arm. Another pinning variation from the Sankaku is to attack the one arm you're tying. Lock that arm tightly, keep your opponent close to you. 
out. Bring your hips out, keep your head down. By holding your own knee, you, you're making this pin much tighter and stronger. Again, the tie is critical. Now you're going into the straight choke by extending your legs forward. Kick your heels outward. This is a reverse look at it. It's very important to kick the heels outward. Now this time, Kaku, you're tying the arm up before rolling and doing chokes from both sides. And then going to a half Nelson position and going for the pin. Tie the arm and secure it and you can choke from both angles. Then go underneath the head for the half Nelson to the pin. This is the escape from the Sankaku. You're going to push your opponent's legs away from you and roll on top of them. Utilize your opponent's momentum as you do the escape. Hitting takedowns from behind your opponent. Grab your opponent's collar from behind, drive it forward, and then come on top of him and go into a modified Kamishio Gatame. The key is to push your opponent's head forward while pulling back on the lapel, rolling him over, and then coming on top. Secure his head by bringing it close to your chest. It is important to scoot out very quickly so that you don't get tangled up. It's a pulling and pushing motion that you want to force your opponent to roll over. Use your knees, and help, which will help you roll him over. Spread your leg out to keep a firm base. Make sure your hips stay low when you're doing the pin. Here's another variation of the takedown by going to the side. Another pinning takedown is by grabbing your opponent's hand and lapel, rolling him to the side, and then pressing your chin against his chest. Make sure you flatten out to keep a firm base so he doesn't roll you over. Again, grab that arm, hold it tightly to you, and roll him over. Make sure you pull the lapel in. This will tighten the pin. Take a look at a simple turnover into a pin.
the opponent's on all fours. Basically, you take one leg of the table out and turn him over into a pin. I'll explain further in a second. I grab the lapel and I take away the left arm right at the elbow, right there. What I'm going to do is pull him back diagonally, turn him onto his back, switch my hips and come on top. Let's take a look again. The key is to control the lapel as I'm pulling him back, keeping him tight into my chest. Once I have him over, I grab the belt and then I switch my hips. Right there is the most important part. Because as you grab the belt, he's going to fight to get out and you have to maintain that control. Let's look at it from the top. Right here, I grab the belt, elbow down, switch my hips, and lock in. Let's take it from the top in slow motion. Notice the angle that I'm bringing him back is 45 degrees over my leg. As I flip him over, this is the most important part, holding the belt and keeping my left elbow down. That pins him to the ground. When I'm ready, I kick him out, switch my hips, keeping my hips to the ground for a secure pin. Standing to Osai Komi, hold downs. This is Tai Toshi into Kesakatami. As soon as you throw the person, the most important thing is to land your weight on their chest. Control the head, pull it up, and rearrange your gripping afterwards. Again, throw right into the pin. As soon as you get the arm grip, you pull up. The most important thing is to keep your weight distributed about 45 degrees across his body. Take it from the top in slow motion. As soon as he hits the ground, drop your weight right onto his chest, lock up the head, pull up on the arm, use your other hand if you have to, to brace yourself as he tries to turn you over. But the main thing is keep your weight directly on his chest. The next technique is Ochigari into Kazuri Kamishio Gatami. Important parts are as soon as his body hits the ground, I'm passing his leg, driving my right shoulder into his chin. Later I adjust the pin. Again, pass the leg quickly, the pressure, and then adjust for the pin. I'm thinking about the pin as soon as he, even before he lands. Let's take from the top, look at it in slow motion. As soon as he goes down, I'm over the leg already. My right shoulder's in his chin, applying pressure, and then I adjust the pin after I release the pressure. It's important to get the pressure quickly onto his chin. This technique is Ippon Sayanagi into Kamisho Gatami. As soon as I make the throw, I drop right on top, it doesn't really matter where my arms go, but that my chest goes right onto his chest. Later I can adjust my grip. Spread my legs as far as you can in order for him not to spin out of it. And later, keep my hips to the ground. Let's look in slow motion as he goes over, drop my weight chest to chest, legs spread apart, and control the pin. In Tomonagi to Tate Shiogatami, the most important thing is that you follow your opponent right on top of him, chest to chest. As soon as your body and your weight are on top of him, push his arm up over his head and trap it in between your head and arm. Keep your legs 
tight against his side and your hips down. Let's take a look at two pinning combinations off of the Ashibaraya foot sweep. First one's Kesakatami. As soon as he lands, I secure the Kesakatami. Again, putting all my weight onto his chest. Second technique is a foot sweep into Yoko Shio Katami. As soon as your opponent goes down, apply pressure chest on chest and your arm in between his legs. Let's look at it in slow motion. Drop your body, your legs are spread and your hips are down. The next technique is Obitori Gaishi into Tate Shiogatami. The key here is as soon as your opponent rolls over, drive his arm up to his head. Again, as soon as he comes over, sink your legs in, but more importantly, drive his shoulder up. You have an option of reaching around, grabbing your own belt to secure the hold. Look at Osorogari into Kesa Gatami. As soon as I throw him, I land my weight, control his head, try to keep my legs split apart in order to keep the balance. Look at in slow motion. As he hits, drop my chest, and then I pull his head toward my chest. One more time. As soon as he lands, control the head and control the arm. Kansetsu Waza, arm locks. Ude Garami, entangled arm lock. Take a look at the basic Ude Garame from the side position. As the arms extended, you get a figure four, pull the elbow in and then up. The most important part of this technique is that the elbow comes in close to the opponent's body. Again, figure four, in and up. As we take a look without the gi, you can see more how the elbow is entangled. And the arm lock is actually already on as you pull it in, but then when you pull it up, it puts even more pressure. Let's look from the top. Again, pull the arm in, close to the body, and then up. Now let's look at the same technique, but the arm is in a different position. This time, I'm going to reach out and grab with my right hand on his wrist, pull the arm in, and behind his back. Again, I'm still figure four, in and up. Without the gi, figure four, in, and up. Notice I lift my weight up a little bit in order to get the arm behind the back. Let's take a look at a third version of Ude Garami. In this version, the elbow's going to be extended. You maintain the figure four, but instead of pulling the arm in, you extend it out by walking your elbows along the tatami with no gi again. Lock, walk your elbows until his arm is extended and then you apply the pressure. It's a 
important to keep your weight on his body while you're applying the arm lock. Now let's look at live combinations of how to get into Ude Garame. First one is Tate Shio Gatame to Ude Garame where the arm is straight. I control the head in Tate Shio Gatame and then I walk the arm until it's extended and apply the pressure. It's important to trap his arm using only my right bicep and forearm. Pin it and then push it down with my other hand and then apply the pressure. I also use my head to keep his hand down on the mat until I can extend it. From that same hold down, Tate Shiogatame, let's look at a different version of Ude Garame. The same figure four applies. Instead of extending the arm, this time I'm pulling it in and applying pressure to the elbow. Again, control his body with the hold, figure four, and pull it in. From the top position, I'm going to catch his wrist and push it to the floor as fast as possible. My left hand sneaks underneath and grabs the wrist. Two on one, both hands are against his wrist, and I pull up. In and up. Again, push it to the floor, in and up. Kesekatame into Ude Garame using my legs. I secure the pin, push the arm in between my legs, and pinch my knees together. Basically, as I lift my hips off the mat, I apply the pressure. From a reverse Kesekatame, I'm going to apply the same technique. Push it down, pinch my knees together, and lift my hips. Let's look at it from the top. Now let's look at Ude Garame from the down position. As your opponent comes in, sit up and go for the arm. Grab it. Figure for it and slip your hip to the other side. Let's look at it in slow motion. As I come up, the most important thing is my hip comes to the other side. Again. Figure four. Push the arm across his back. Another option from the down position is to roll your opponent completely over into Ude Garame. Sit up, get a figure four. As your opponent goes over, lift up. Again, apply the pressure behind his back. It's important to get the figure four really quick. This way you have him locked up all the way over. One more time. Switch your hips over and lock. Now as the opponent is attacking from the front, grab his wrist and apply the Ude Garami. Again, pull him in, slide your foot over across his body and pull up. Stick your foot all the way through and hook his far leg. Same time, pull the wrist up. Again, watch my foot, it hooks, and I pull up. Ude Gatame, arm lock. Let's look at the basics of how this works. As your opponent extends his arm, you trap his elbow with your forearm, and also trap his wrist with your chin and shoulder. If you can, you can trap his other arm with your leg to control his body from turning into you. Straighten your back, and squeeze, pulling your elbows into your chest. Now let's look at a combination of Ushiro Kesekatame into Ude Gatame. 
As I'm holding my opponent, I just grab the wrist of the free arm and push it straight in between my legs. I try to keep the arm extended as much as possible, and when I have a chance, use my other knee to apply more pressure. Again, I push down, trap it with my knee, and push down. Now from the bottom position, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my hips into Udegatame. I reach under the opponent's arm. As soon as I can see my four fingers, I trap it and switch my hips. The key to this move is the switching of the hips. You must go from one side to your other side. The next version is I reach up over my opponent's arm, again switching my hips and extending the arm. The arm pressure is applied by pushing with my right arm toward my shoulder. Again, watch. Over, trap, and push up over my head. Let's look at a standing ude gatame. When your opponent is holding on the side of your sleeve or around your back, basically you just underhook his arm at the elbow, move in a circle, and bring his elbow closer to you. It's important to have your grip right below his elbow in order to extend it and apply the pressure. This is a quick, effective way to bring your opponent to the ground and then you can follow up in grappling. Again, arm comes underneath, extend it, and move in a circle. Here's a look from the inside angle. Jujigatame, cross body lock. As I step over his head, the most important thing is that I squeeze my knees together. The arm is extended, and the pinky goes down with the thumb up. I have to control his wrist, and I control his body with my legs and my knees squeezed together. Keep my backside close to his shoulder. There can't be any space in between his arm and my backside. Let's look at it from the top. Let's look at a different leg position on Jujigatame. This time I'm going to cross my legs over his body and lock my ankles together. Notice I pull him as tight as possible, bringing my backside up to his shoulder, cross my legs, and lock. The key to this, again, is to squeeze your knees as close and tight as possible. This locks and controls his whole body. Without this pressure, without this lock, Gigi Katami will not work. Again, pull yourself in close. Notice I pull the forearm first, tighten it up, and then extend the arm. The first method and most effective for myself is to take the arm toward the head and then back around. In detail, I'm going to stick my wrist inside his arm and wrist, and then I'm going to take my other arm and basically punch across his body and force his arm forward. This is the most effective for myself in competition. Always go toward the front and then back around. Second method is more of a wrist lock. I'm going to apply my same pressure by forcing my wrist in between his arm and his wrist, and then I'm going to figure four my own wrist, pulling his grip off of his key. Let's look at it in slow motion, toward the head, and back around. It's important to keep both knees pinched together to keep control of his body. Here's the third method. Now I'm going to come underneath both arms with my left, and I'm just basically going to grab him at the knuckles, and again, it's like a wrist lock. You're pulling the wrist forward, moving toward his head and back around. 
One more time. Control with the knees. Take his wrist and just basically pull it off. Slow motion. Notice how my hands, when I grip his fingers, I pull them directly toward my body. This loosens his grip. The fourth method is a forearm lock to break his grip. I'm applying the pressure with my forearm bone against his. Figure fouring, squeezing and pulling toward the head. Again, pulling in and up, toward the head and around. The fifth method. What I'm doing here is basically using my elbow to pry his arm toward his head. As I clasp my hands together, I want to dig my elbow into his, make a figure four at a 90 degree angle, and back around. Again, in slow motion. Make sure that you create this 90 degrees right there. And applying pressure and extend the arm. This sixth variation is used against an opponent who is too strong to break the grip. I'm using his own gi to tie him up into the pin. I use my right foot to stop him from pinning while my left hand grabs his gi and locks in his own wrist. Pull it tight into your other hand, hips to the mat for the pin. One more time, stop his bridge, pull it in tight, slide your hips down into the pin. The seventh method, again, is against the opponent who's too strong to break the grip. Basically, you grab his belt and settle into a pin. Let's look at it in detail. Reach through, grab his belt. Once you have that, you pull his feet and his legs toward you. And then you basically just sit up onto him, putting all your weight onto his stomach. Just watch it. Pull his legs toward you, onto his stomach. A variation off of this is to take the Juji Katami. Once you have the pin settled and he releases the arm to get out, that's when you take the Juji. One more time. Sit up. As soon as you feel that arm come loose, go back into the arm lock. From the top. Notice how I pull his head in with my foot. Stretch him out. This creates a strong pin back into the arm lock. Let's look at combinations into Juji Gatami. The first one is Yoko Shio. As the opponent tries to get out, I slide my leg up over his head and basically twist into the Juji. One more time. Step up and twist. Important thing here is to keep my hips very low and keep my backside tight to his shoulder. Let's look at it from the top. As my opponent attacks from the front on this one, I'm going to twist my hips underneath into Juju Gautama. Again, my opponent's coming forward. I twist into Juji. What helps this move is I grab underneath the knee, pull him forward, which makes the roll happen a lot easier. With my left leg, I want to come down on his head very hard. Let's look at it from the top. I pull him forward, twisting, twisting. My left leg comes down hard, and my right leg helps the body go over. One more time. It's important to get a right angle before you're rolling. From that same position, I could also twist into Juju Gatame face down. As the opponent comes in, I'm going to pull his sleeve forward, push his knee away, or his hip away with my right leg, and then basically high leg it over into the Juju position. Let's look at it in slow motion. 
pull, straighten his arm out, and twist over. One more time. It's important to shift my hips to the side in order to make this work. Next move, I'm attacking from the top. I'm going to roll him over into Jujigatami. Let's look at it in detail. As I sink my leg, I'm going to figure four his arm, basically pull his hip down, and then roll him over into Juju. Again, figure four, my elbow keeps pressure on his head, and then my knee separates his head from his shoulder. You have to create some type of pain here so that he loses concentration. Watch, my elbow down, as I post my head, my knee comes in, pushes his head away. That causes pain. I grab my own lapel, reach out, and then I'm going to pull his hip to the mat. Let's watch it from this angle. Separate it, reach out, pull his hip down, and then I hook his leg and flip him over. One more time. Pressure. From this angle, watch his hip touch the mat, and then take the head over. One more time. Okay, let's look at it from the top now. As I apply the pressure, separate it, his head, and then his hip touches the mat and I roll him over. Next move, I'm gonna come in, in reverse direction. I'm gonna pull the arm tight and roll him over. Basically, it's the same move except I'm going in a reverse direction. Let's look at it in detail. I sink my leg in. This time, I'm gonna wrap my body around his arm, lock it in, reach the leg, and pull it over. Again, sink it, roll. Right here, I'm gonna pull my own hand up and then pull him over. Again, from this angle, I pull my own hand, make it tight, reach for the far leg, and flip him over. This is a great move in competition because it's quick and effective. As the opponent comes in for an attack and goes on all fours, you immediately sink the leg and go for this move. One more time. It's important, now let's watch from the top. Once I sink my leg and I'm on my hip, be patient in this position. Reach across and pull him over. Let's look at Tayotoshi into Jujigatame. As soon as I throw my opponent, I'm going to squeeze my knees together, sit, clamp down, and extend the arm. Most important thing is, as soon as my opponent falls, I'm squeezing my knees together and pulling up all the slack with his sleeve arm. Let's look at it from the top. Goes over, sit, pinch, and go back. One more time. Next, a flying Jujigatame. As I hold my opponent's lapel, I pull my knee into his armpit, and basically I'm gonna put my head in between his legs and roll him straight over. As I jump into the air, my right leg is kicking high and then coming down hard on his head. Then from the top, Hizagatame, knee arm lock. The basic points are, switch your hip and use your knee to apply the pressure on the elbow. As the opponent comes in, switch your hip to one side, trap the arm using both your arms, but most importantly, bring your knee up and over to apply the pressure. Haragatame, stomach arm lock. You apply this technique grabbing the opponent's belt and high on the back collar. Scoop his arm up using your legs, left or right, it doesn't really matter. The way you apply the arm lock is by putting your stomach to the mat. Notice how I scoop the arm, figure four my own legs to extend his elbow. 
This is the perfect technique to use against the person who's grabbing at your leg. From the top position you can see how you extend the arm out until the person's flat on the mat. Sankaku Garame, Triangular Entanglement. Pull your opponent to you as you high step over and catch his arm, trapping him to the floor. Key points are to switch your hip left to right, come over high with your leg, and trap his arm to the ground. Notice how I apply the pressure. Once he's entangled, I just push up, use your hip to apply the pressure. Turn into a sitting position, sit up and apply pressure. From the top. Sankaku Jime to Juji Gatame combination. While attempting to do the Sankaku Jime, go to an arm bar combination. Lift your hips up and apply the pressure to the elbow. As he's trying to escape, he may come down to the side. You can also arm bar from laying on your back. Lift your hips up. Make sure the knees are tight. Lifting your hips up and apply pressure to the elbow. Don't forget to push your opponent down with your legs and then applying the arm bar by pinching your legs together, lifting your hips. Here's a variation from the Sankaku to the arm bar. If the arm bar initially doesn't work, reach over with one of your legs and come over his face for the Juji Gatame. This is a much more effective arm bar. If your opponent tries to run away, grab his leg and bring him in. And you can also do the arm bar from both grabbing his leg, grabbing your arm, and then lifting your hips to apply the arm bar. Waki Gatame, side arm lock. Make sure you pull your opponent's arm firmly to you, lock it firmly with your elbow, and slide down. Make sure you pull the elbow joint backwards. It is critical to lock the arm. You also want to make sure that the pinky finger of the opponent is pointing upwards. Kamoi Nage to Juji Katame combination. Here you're attempting to do a Kamoi Nage, and if you miss that, go straight into the arm bar. While doing the arm bar, ensure that your knees are pinched together, and roll over very quickly and capture the arm. Raise your hips to apply the pressure. Off-balancing, positioning, and body movement. These are the key elements in grappling. If you use your total body together using your arms, your legs, and your hips, it's much more effective against an opponent. Watch how I use my legs to off-balance and position my body in order to make the armbar work. Again, it's body movement. You have to be fluid, and you have to use your hips back and forth in order to off-balance your opponent. Remember these and use them as you grapple.